Hey guys, in this episode, I'm gonna be telling you a story about the coolest dog on the planet. A dog that's lived in a VW bus her entire life. This will be a great episode for dog lovers out there. It will also be a fantastic true story for everybody else. This is the story of Alaska. Last time on Astor Alaska, we shared our first steps in the USA after three years driving north from South America. We experienced some unusual culture shock and an overwhelming welcome by the Southern Californians. This time we're taking a look at the life of one of Peru's greatest explorers, everybody's favourite travel dog, Alaska. We'll be looking at some of the challenges she faces living life full time on the road including why she ended up on the TV news in California and distressingly on the vet's operating table. Let's go exploring. Like all good stories, this one is best started at the beginning. So rewind with me a few years, if you will, and come back to South America. By the time I arrived in Lima, Peru, I was already six months into an incredible adventure. I'd somehow acquired a V-Dub Combi, crossed the Andes Mountains a handful of times, and picked up more hitchhikers than I could count on all my fingers and toes combined. So when we discovered a little puppy that needed a home, we thought, let's give her one. Sure, our home was an old Volkswagen, our address ever-changing, but our garden was huge. We didn't know how it would be to cross borders, what impact traveling with a dog would have on our lives, or even how to look after a puppy for that matter. All we knew is that we could give her an adventure. This would be a dog like no other. A dog who wouldn't know the meaning of the word walk because her whole life would be a walk. We named her Alaska after our destination. After a few short weeks, Alaska moved into the front seat of our V-Dub full time and it's all she's known ever since. Like most puppies, she immediately took to exploring, searching her homeland for life's lessons. In a culture where dogs are second class citizens, we were all learning where she would and would not be welcome. Alaska followed her nose everywhere. She was developing what we now call her social compass and it's a compass that still guides us to this day. Alaska loved the combi, but like most dogs and like us, her heart lives outdoors. The only thing she wasn't excited about was swimming in the ocean waves. But then when you're less than a foot tall, that's hardly surprising really, is it? We found that national parks and reserves across the Americas were, for the most part, off limits to pets, which meant either we would have to make the sacrifice and not visit them, or we'd have to find our own adventures in seldom visited locations. Alaska couldn't come everywhere with us, but if it wasn't for her, perhaps we wouldn't have roamed so far in search of our own adventures. It wasn't until we crossed our first border with Alaska, searched our map for the longest road into Ecuador's most remote region, and headed into the Amazon jungle that Alaska really found her paws. Maybe it was the pressure of competition from BB the chicken, our new temporary companion. Or maybe it was the excitement of being guided down remote hunting trails by 20 indigenous kids screaming, Alaska, Alaska. Whatever it was, this Peruvian pup sowed her seed of confidence in the Amazon jungle. Hey, put your dog on a leash. <laughs> By the time we entered Colombia and arrived at the top of Alaska's birth continent, she had firmly secured her place in the combi crew. We shipped our V-Dub north around the only missing section of road on the Pan-American Highway, the infamous Darien Gap. 
The combi made it to Central, but we couldn't make the rendezvous. South America held us at ransom, and Alaska was the hostage. She wasn't allowed on the last leg of public transport out of the continent. If you're thinking of traveling with a pet without your own vehicle, understand that the rules, or lack thereof, vary as widely and as frequently as your location. Some places, it isn't a problem. Others, they must be stowed in a container and a cardboard box simply won't do. In the north of Colombia, pet travel was forbidden on public transport. They told me I would have to leave her behind. So I did what we would all do, right? I had a high-vis jacket tailored, painted a broomstick white, and pretended to be a blind man to get her into the Darien Gap. Now imagine, if you will, the spectacle of this scene as we entered the most dangerous jungle on earth. But that was nothing compared to stopping at a remote indigenous community to refuel our boat, only to find that dogs were banned on the island and most of the children had never even seen a dog in their lives. Alaska thought it was an awesome game and the kids went crazy running in every direction. Crossing the Darien Gap is not something that we'll forget in a hurry, nor is it something that I'm proud of, but I had to be there when she needed me, as she would be for me in the coming months. Muy bien. Central America saw an increase in heat for us and an increase in problems on the road too. Literally, you couldn't write this stuff. It was Alaska's turn to play support role as the only other member of the combi crew during those lonely first months in Panama and Costa Rica. Struggling through engine rebuilds 5, 6 and 7 wouldn't have been possible without having Alaska by my side, encouraging me to join her for the occasional coconut break, which, believe me, kept our sanity. Sticking together has always been optional with Alaska and I, as she's always free to roam. But as she grew older and started to notice the strange behaviour of the local male dogs, it became necessary to have her close by my side. Everywhere we travel, there always seems to be more male dogs on the streets than females, which makes travelling with a female much less hassle. In most cases. Unless, of course, it's that time. I had her spayed in Central America for a cost of about eight US dollars. It solved most of the problems, but we still ran into a few issues with other street dogs. The sad consequence of being raised on the streets amongst street dogs is that Alaska learned that other dogs would either steal her food or were a threat. And as such, she's always preferred humans to canines. Oh, and she's not that keen on big fish either. Little ones, well, little ones are fascinating. Alaska has always been surrounded by people. Each of the nomadic souls that pass through our lives contributes something to keeping our micro-community alive. Each member of the combi crew must bring something to the table, and Alaska is no exception. One of the ways we keep our costs low on a multi-year expedition across the world is to find food along the way. In Belize, Alaska learned how to catch fish. We tie a line and set the bait out in the water, leaving the line tethered to a soda bottle in the tree. When the fish is hooked and makes off with the bottle, Alaska retrieves it and brings in dinner with her. This is the best fishing dog in the world. <laughs> Finally, she's fishing. That's amazing. Good <laughs> effort, Alaska. This is just your first that fish, is, girl. That's like the biggest fish that's been caught, isn't yeah. it? Muy bien, Alaska. Muy bien. Oh, Woo! A little bit. <laughs> Yep, this canine has some travel skills, I'll tell you. We were all learning a lot on the road, each new experience slowly shaping who we were, incrementally improving on the previous versions of ourselves that we left behind. After a thousand changing landscapes and many hot miles across Mexico, we made it to the USA. 
Alaska in full traditional clothing crossed into a new, strange English-speaking world with a typical nose for exploration. Well, we first introduced you to them last week, a group taking a break in San Diego as they travel from Santiago, Chile to Alaska in a VW van. But that trip hit a snag this week when their dog named Alaska disappeared on her own adventure. CBS News 8 photojournalist Scott Hall has the story of how the group got back together. This is supposed to be America. It's, it's safe here, right? <laughs> Hi, I'm Ben. Meet Alaska. We've already been in the Amazon and then all through South America. This is our house. We were parked just down the street, um, living out of the van. She saw the skunk and was that excited about this new animal that she ran so hard, she ripped her collar right off her neck. Once the message went up onto Craigslist, people were like, what, Alaska, the doll from the news? No way, she's missing? So we walked up and down the street, knocking on everyone's doors, talking to everyone that went past. Everyone was quite friendly and helpful. Alaska had been attacked by a skunk. You remember this place, Alaska? We found her here drying in the sun. She was just here, all washed, full belly. It was found by this nice lady in a very desperate situation, smelling terrible. She still smells terrible. <laughs> we have to teach her that some animals are dangerous, like snakes. When she was dancing with snakes in Belize, I was like, Alaska, that's pretty dangerous. We woke up to crocodiles in Mexico, and now skunks in California. She is my best friend. She's the, the best companion I've had in my travels. She's called Alaska because she's going to Alaska. She's named after a destination. There's been a lot of times that we've wanted to give up and just throw in the towel. But we have a dog called Alaska. She has to get to Alaska. Alaska was definitely in a cheeky mood and seemed lively enough. But then one day, we woke up to the front of the car covered in blood. We saw a few vets in San Diego. She seemed healthy enough, but we had her thoroughly checked over. At first, we thought she had a foxtail seed or something stuck up her nose. So what they're gonna do is put her under and then stick a probe up her nose. Don't listen, don't listen. Yeah, it was only the right side. I searched the entire left side, no blood, no signs of anything. So it wasn't a foxtail. A while later, we received her blood test back and found out she had Ehrlichia, a tick-borne disease similar to Lyme's disease. She'd had it for a while, but as she's always so active, we hadn't noticed. We caught it in the chronic stages where her white blood cells had been attacked and the bleeding had started. Organ failure and paralysis follow. For now, she's on heavy medication, regular blood tests and close observation. We're glad that this happened in a place with first-class medical care but the cost of that care was a real shock. Our tight budget had been smashed and we quickly realized that life is very different north of the border. Guys, I know a lot of you are gonna have questions about how Alaska is doing. I'm happy to say that she is doing really well. Unfortunately, Alikia is one of those types of diseases that she'll have for her entire life, but her blood count level is back to normal and she's doing really great. Thank you for all of your concerns. You know, I wanna share a couple of things that I've learned traveling with Alaska through the Americas. It is an incredible way to travel and you get to share something with your pet, with your best friend that you would never normally get to do. So I do highly recommend it. Hopefully this video shows you that sometimes there's sacrifices that you need to make. If you're relying on public transport, for example, be aware that some places don't allow dogs on public transport. So you can be quite limited and it's not fair to have to be, get yourself in a situation where you can't take your pet with you. Crossing borders can be a challenge. For the most part, it's, it's a process that you can work through, but it does vary in every single border you cross, even different borders within the same country. You'll need to have with you a valid rabies vaccination and possibly a health certificate, but you can probably just turn up at the border and wing it. We made a separate video about crossing borders with pets that you should check out if you're interested in that. It's, we've got quite a sneaky little process that helps us get across. As with trying to stop your dog from getting sick, it is very difficult. There are different bugs in different locations. When it comes to knowing which bugs are in different places, talk to the local vets. But we also recommend having your own intel from a trusted source. And finally, when you're traveling with your pet, as you guys know, early action is better. It's best not to take any risks. If they're looking sick, take them to the vet for a professional opinion. It's the only way that you can really know what's going on with them. 
we've had a lot of false alarms with Alaska, but we'd rather it that way and she still be here than something bad happen like this. Thank you so much for watching, guys. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and leave us a comment. We'll be down there checking it out with you. If you want to follow Alaska, you can do that on the eye icon above. And thank you so much to our supporters on Patreon. You guys are awesome. Until next time, happy travels. Next time on Aster Alaska, we discover the wonderful world of Californian Volkswagens as we meet some pretty influential characters. We'll be looking at two of the rarest v dubs in the world and winning an award of our own. Thanks for watching another episode of Aster Alaska, guys. Did you know that there's now over 100 people in our production team that make these episodes possible? If you would like to help us create the next episode, we'd love to have you join us on Patreon. Click the box on the right for more information. Or if you'd like to check out the next episode, that'll be the box on the left. We'd love to hear from you in the comments below, so don't forget to say hi. <laughs>